Today I'm gonna to share with you what I believe is the number one reason why many Christians never get the breakthrough from God that they desire. That's coming up today. Hey my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. So have you ever been in that season of your life where you were just longing and waiting patiently for God to do something in your life, whether it may be in your relationships or your finances, in your business or spiritually or at your church or in your ministry or whatnot. And for whatever reason, it is just not happening. Well, I believe that there could be a reason for that, and I want to talk about that today. Our story today comes from the Old Testament book of 2 Kings chapter 5, and it's about a man named Naaman, and I want to highlight three things about his life. Number one, I want to look at Naaman's reality. Second of all, I want to look at Naaman's response, and then finally, I want to look at Naaman's result. Beginning in verse 1, it says, The king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord Lord had given Aram great victories, but though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. I want you to notice here that Naaman had it going on. He was a great warrior. He was a military strategist. He had the favor of his boss. Everything on the outside looked good, but there was one thing in his life that he needed a breakthrough for, and that was leprosy. Isn't it interesting that God will oftentimes allow us to experience an unfulfilled desire for extended seasons because he wants to keep us dependent upon him. And so to speed the story up a little bit, in verses two through eight, Naaman discovers that there is a man that is able to heal him of his leprosy, and he makes his way to go visit the prophet Elisha. So reading in verse 9, it says, So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message, Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Now I want you to pay close attention here to how Naaman responded to the command that Elisha gave him because oftentimes this is the same way that we respond whenever God calls us to do something. It says here in verse 11, but Naaman became angry and stalked away and he says this, I thought he would certainly come out to meet me. He said, I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord his God and heal me. The first thing that we see that Naaman did, and oftentimes what hinders and blocks us from receiving the breakthrough, is he expected it to happen instantly. He says, hey, I thought that Elisha was not just going to send a messenger to me. I thought he was going to actually come out and meet me himself and just wave his hand and lay hands on me and that I will be healed instantly. You know what? There's a lot of things that God may want to do in and through your life that it just may not happen right away, it may actually take time. And oftentimes, because we're not willing to put in the time, we forfeit the breakthrough that God intended for us. But the second thing that we see that Naaman did, that we oftentimes do, is that he expected Elisha, or God through Elisha, to do all of the work. He says, hey, I expect Elisha to come out and just wave his hand, lay his hands on me, and heal me, and I would be good. Isn't that the same thing that we do? God may be called calling us to take an active part in the breakthrough, in our own change experience, but oftentimes we just put it all on God and say, you know what, I expect God to do everything. I expect God to give me this job. I expect God to send me my wife. I expect God to send me my husband. I expect God to make this business grow. I expect God to grow my church or grow my ministry. And God is saying, hey, it doesn't work like that. I am asking you to take an active part and an active role in you experiencing the breakthrough breakthrough that you want from me. But the third mistake that Naaman made is that he assumed that whatever God was asking him to do would be convenient for him. It says here in verse 12, aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abanya and the Farfar better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. He says, hey, this isn't convenient for me. I can just wash right here in the waters of Damascus, which are by the way, cleaner than and traveling all the way to Israel and wash myself in the muddy, dirty Jordan River. He says, this isn't convenient for me. And isn't it oftentimes that's 
same thing that keeps us from experiencing the breakthrough. God may be giving us some clear direction. We say, you know what, God, I'm not comfortable with that. It's stretching me outside of my comfort zone. This isn't convenient or easy for me to do. And because it's not easy for us to do, we often forfeit the breakthrough that God wants to give us in our lives. The fourth mistake that Naaman made that we oftentimes make is that he rejected the plan that Elisha gave him because it was unconventional. It didn't make sense. Are you kidding me? I have to go down to the Jordan River and dip myself seven times? How is that gonna heal me of my leprosy? That doesn't make sense, God. And oftentimes, that's the very thing that blocks us from getting the blessing that God wants to give us. It's because God gives us a clear direction, a clear command, but because it doesn't make sense to us in our logical, finite minds, we just dismiss it as if it's not God. And then the fifth mistake that Naaman made is he rejected this idea because it was going to force him to have to humble himself. You know, he was an esteemed person. He was a popular person. He was a well-known army commander. And for him to be seen humiliating himself, going down to the muddy, dirty Jordan River and dipping himself seven times was just beyond something he was wanting to do. And the Bible says because of that, he went away mad. Could it be that God is calling you to do something that may require you to humble yourself, put down that pride, but if you do that, it could very well be the key that unlocks the blessing and the breakthrough that you've been waiting for God to give you. But not only have we looked at Naaman's reality, we've also looked at Naaman's response, and now we're going to look at Naaman's result. It says here in verse 13, but his officers tried to reason with him and said, sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply go and wash and be cured. So Naaman Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him, and his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was healed. The lesson here is clear. Oftentimes, God is not asking or requiring you to do something big. He's just saying, hey, I want you to take a simple act of faith, a simple step of obedience, and trust me to do the big things. Isn't it interesting that if we just do the little things and leave the big things up to God, God God is the God of breakthrough. God is the God of change. God will do the big things in your life whenever you take small steps of faith. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.